Okay, so Robbie, you went from being Marissa Mayer's first big acquisition at Yahoo with your last company, Stamped, to now suddenly running product for Instagram, one of the most popular products in the world. How did you pull that off, and, and why are you so good at this product thing? Well, uh, I mean, honestly, we uh, after the acquisition of Stamped, um, I was looking at new things to go do, and one of the things um, I got in touch with, one of the things I learned was that Instagram was um, hiring and looking for someone to uh, work on some new products. Um, I ended up meeting the team, absolutely fell in love with the people that I met, and just decided this is something I'm going to take a shot at. I was actually living in New York in the time, moved with my wife to the Bay Area. And we got started working on new consumer products for Instagram. And then over the last two and a half years, um, it's been a wild run. We've launched stories, we've redone direct, um, we launched live, we made big changes to feed. And really now I've created uh, almost a new Instagram, which has been really exciting to be a part of. So what is your superhero origin story? Like, What made you care about designing products for people like in, so in social in the first place? Yeah, it's a good question. I think there's a couple aspects to this. One is I've always been um, kind of far from my family. I've done long distance relationships for a while. My now wife, we did long distance for five years cross country. I currently live in the Bay Area. My family's in DC. So I've always cared a lot about bringing people closer together and how technology can make that much easier for people. The other element is I think just caring a lot about product and design. Um, actually growing up, I, my grandfather was a publisher of a graphic design magazine called Print. So I've always cared a lot about design and thinking through how products get made. And maybe bringing those two things together probably led me to product. So there's been a lot of changes at Instagram lately. You know, Kevin and Mike, the, the co-founders, they left and they said that there was, there's always reasons when you leave. What do you think those reasons were? I mean, Kevin and Mike are amazing people, amazing product thinkers, amazing leaders. And they were at Instagram for over six years. And that's a pretty amazing run. I think it's pretty hard to think of another founding team that's been at a company that's been an acquired company for, for that long. Um, so I think for them, they're entrepreneurs and excited to do new things. And I think they said it best when they, in their announcement. Um, I'm excited to see what they do. But they did say that there was stuff internally going on, and especially with the, and you know, our sources said that there was tension with Facebook. You know, what do you think that was about? You know, I can't kind of speculate to what's going on exactly in, in their minds, but I know that as um, entrepreneurs, when you work on something for a really long time and you care very deeply about it, it's just time to go do new things at some point. And I think they got to that point. What was the atmosphere like inside of Instagram after that? Like, how's morale? Yeah, I mean, it's always tough when founders move on to new things. Like, we love them, and I love working with both of them. But I think what it, it did was really motivated us to really think more around institutionalizing their ideals and culture that they brought to the company. Because really, they're, they're two people that I think did an amazing job curating how Instagram built product for so long. And now it's incumbent on us to bring that to the company and really institutionalize their thinking. So we've done a lot of work recently um, to really write down our values much more, um, much more strictly. Um, and it's been really important for us to do. So now every um, person at the company, whether you know, they were in a room with Mike and Kevin or not, can now go through the same thought process that they would have put product teams through. So there's been this whole philosophy at Facebook. I know they changed it to be about stable infra, but that whole move fast and break things, that's Facebook. That wasn't Instagram. And Kevin kind of acted as this firewall between the companies. Now we're seeing like more Facebook notifications, more ways to share from Instagram to Facebook, contact sharing with Bonfire and Messenger. Do you feel like you guys are, Facebook and Instagram are coming closer together? Well, I think what's interesting is that Instagram has a distinct set of values, and we really wrote them down, and there are three things. They're being people first and really caring about really solving problems for people and making sure that the user is our North Star for all the decisions that we make. It's simplicity, focusing on the most important problems so that you have a simple product that makes sense, and it's craft and care so that you sweat the details, you care about um, what you're building and take pride in it. And I think there is a distinct um, kind of Instagram product culture that we're maintaining. Um, but obviously, we share a lot of infrastructure, and that's a good thing, too. Like, without in Facebook, we wouldn't have been able to launch live as quickly as we have. We wouldn't have been able to achieve a lot of the things that we've done. So there's, there's good things with, with being a part of Facebook. 
I will certainly say that Instagram is a lot more simple than Facebook, which seems to just throw everything against the wall and see what sticks. And a lot of times those things end up kind of flopping, especially some of those standalone apps. You know, why is it that with Instagram, you guys have a much higher hit rate with the success of your product launches? I, mean, I do think Instagram has a very specific way of building. And I think it's built off of um, the values that I mentioned. I think everything starts with uh, the user. So we go very deep with understanding user concerns, motivations, problems for what's really preventing them from using our products in the ways that we hope that they do. I mean, Instagram's mission is to bring you closer to the people that you love and the things that you love. And there's very clear ways that it's hard for that to happen. And so we really try to understand those deeply. The second thing that we do is we, we rigorously and analytically look at the main barriers and try to prioritize them ruthlessly. So there's usually one or two things that, that really drives whether or not the product's going to work or not, and we have to isolate those. The third area is around design. And so how do we build something that's intuitive, it's natural to use, it reuses both the patterns and UI that you're already used to, you're not teaching you new things, um, where we draw from things in the real world and we implement it. And I think combining those things together has allowed us to build products that I think we've been really fortunate in the last couple of years have been things that people have loved to use. Yeah, I mean, certainly sometimes you guys have taken a product and turned it into much, something much more popular than the original version. But how do you contrast that with Facebook strategy? Because they rigor rigorously test things. They use lots of analytics. They look deep into who is using things and why. But you guys have this much higher success rate. So like, what's different about your strategy compared to theirs? I mean, I think Instagram's um, way of building is to be spend much more of the time before you launch and think much, much more about the why and around how we want it to fit into the Instagram system. And I think that that's just a unique thing from Instagram. I think people are surprised to hear, particularly with some things that we've built, that we've spent months, months, months literally just thinking about the product and thinking about different versions of it, throwing some things away, and actually not launching. And then when you launch, you learn a lot. And then you have to very quickly see what's working and what's not to troubleshoot it. But I think it's probably the time we spend pre-launch that really makes the Instagram product culture distinctive. One of the things that didn't quite feel like that, though, that didn't feel quite as loved as the rest of your guys' products was Instagram TV. Uh, why? I mean, it was a loved product from the process that I saw. Um, I'm not, I don't know what drove you to think that maybe it had less, but that was something Kevin was very deeply involved in. Obviously, he gave a Oh, no, I know that you guys put the care it, into it, but why haven't users re responded the same way? I mean, I think it's just an early product. It's a big new product category for us, looking at how to bring you closer to creators um, and making sure that it fits really well into the system and making sure that people really are, are liking it and enjoying it is just something that takes time, especially when you have a product like Instagram that's so deeply used by so many people. Um, whenever you're adding something pretty fundamentally new, it, it takes time for it to evolve. Okay, so you know, Mark Zuckerberg has recently said that he views social networks' role kind of like a government, where you know the government is expected to keep crime in check, not necessarily eliminate crime 100%. That seems kind of infeasible. Uh, how do you think about that when you're dealing with opioid dealers, bullying, misinformation, election interference. How do you find the tolerance level for how much of this you're going to allow and how much you're going to continue hunting for? Yeah. Um, so there's two things that we look at here. Um, cause ultimately, the goal of what all we're trying to do here is to create a community that's safe. Because our mission is to connect people so that you can feel close to friends and loved ones when you can't be together. And that's hard to do if there's a lot of stuff that's getting in the way. And so it is really mission critical for us. And we've really taken a pr an approach to solving this, I think, has two elements. One is being much more proactive than I think we have been in the past. So there's certain things that we know are harmful for you. And we can, if the more that we can identify things like harassment or bullying and pull it off before other people even see it, which we built classifiers to go do now, that's great. And we should be much more proactive in protecting the, and safeguarding the community from that way. However, we can't find everything. And also, if you were to find something with even the remote kind of feeling that it could be bad, let's just pull it down, you may actually go too far because we're also trying to protect people's rights to share and produce and connect with people. And so it's also important that you just provide control because we're not going to get everything perfect, and we haven't. So how do you make sure there's, there's transparency and control for if you see something, you can report it. We now have thousands of people looking at this 24-7 so that things can come down. We can understand things on the product and things on the platform that may, may not be able to be there. Um, and make sure users ultimately have the control over who can contact them, what, contact, what content they see, and then have something that they can go do about it. 
is there ever a point where you're like, we've done enough on this and it's just not economically feasible to keep pouring more investment into trying to get to 99.9, 99.99? Like, what, how do you know when to stop? I think as long as we keep hearing, hey, this is a bad experience that I had on Instagram, and that really prevented me from having the positive experience that we are trying to foster as a team, we are, our job's not done. And I think that when you have a community of a billion people, it's probably never done. Um, I do think we have a long way to go still. Um, and as long as we keep hearing that from people, from anyone, we're going to keep working on it. I feel like a lot of those problems have gotten better solutions over the last year. You guys have rolled out AI for detecting bullying in photos, done these big sweeps of fake accounts, uh, and you've also done things to get rid of bullying and, uh, and opioid dealers. You really cut down on people trying to share their contact information in that way. But, but a year ago, it didn't quite feel like that. Why was that? I mean, I think every aspect of a new product creates a new set of challenges. And I think it's hard to predict what those challenges are a priori. So when you start, you just want to network and you want people to connect. And your biggest problem is saying, hey, it's hard to find my friends. My friends aren't on Instagram and I'm trying to share my life with them. But my sister who's in high school, it wasn't on the product. So you really focus on getting those problems right and cracking them. And then you realize, wow, the thing that's going to define us the next year is actually completely different than what defined us the previous year before. And because of the things that we've built, actually created a whole bunch of new things that we got to go fix. And so I think it's just very hard to know long term exactly what you're going to have to go do. And the process that we have to follow is just really, really doing a great job listening for these problems and being good listeners in the world, and then having a great and structured process for going to being problem solvers and, and actually making a change to the system when we see one is needed. So Instagram has kind of become this lifeboat for Facebook's brand. It's kind of wild that 57% of Americans don't actually even know that Instagram is owned by Facebook. Does that play to your advantage? I don't know if it plays a, an advantage, but I know that Instagram is a distinct product to people. And I think one thing that we try to focus on is, why do people use Instagram? What do they love about Instagram? And what can we do to solve the problems that are Instagram focused in terms of our product? And that's where we spend our time. Does it ever feel like the, you are sort of winning because there's all these users who are shifting away from Facebook? I think that what has been the root of Instagram success is just being focused on a specific problem that a lot of people really care about. It's we want to help you feel close to people that you can't really be with every day. And that focus and through the visual medium, which helps you feel that sense of closeness, has been why we've been successful, in my opinion, more than anything. So you must see these scandals that happen at Facebook and be like, man, that's not us. That's, that's them. That's their problem sometimes. But with things like hiring opposition research firm, the definers, you know, how did you personally feel about that? I mean, Facebook's been in the news a ton. And obviously, it's tough to read stories where you're like, oh, wow, OK, that's interesting. But at the end of the day, we know internally that People are operating with the best intent possible. And on in Instagram side, we focus on what we can do to improve things. Like when I read the news and I'm like, oh, whoa, there's, there's like some real problems in the world. It just motivates me to want to go fix them. This is what we did with authenticity and a bunch of the things like taking down inauthentic content with the API um, to just actually problem solve and fix. And so honestly, that's been my reaction. You, you said that you read that news and sometimes you think it's interesting. Like, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, it's just you read, when you read about your own company in the news so frequently, I don't think a lot of people have that experience. It's, just a, it's, a, it's a very like surreal process to, to have your company be narrated externally. Do you guys ever think about how you're hiring along these lines of thinking of maybe we should be hiring more skeptics? Like, is that something you guys are actively trying to do? Because you said you, it's hard to predict what these products are going to do and how people are going to use them. Which is, it's really tough to understand what the people are going to do with these products sometimes. So are you guys purposefully trying to hire those kind of skeptics who, who think pessimistically and you know, to balance off some of the idealism that I think is a good thing for the product? I think it's less about hiring a specific type of person and more about creating the right culture internally where everyone's thinking about the whole set of problems and understanding that, hey, we have a new set of problems now that may have not been as, as big uh, years ago when we were really small. And now they're absolutely essential to get right. So for products that we built and um, some of the new ones that we're actually talking about, we have in the room had discussions around, hey, how could this be used to like hurt people, or how could a bully potentially use this? And we're actually pushing ourselves way harder um, because we know now that we're so big. This is much, much more of an issue, and it's our job to protect our community and anticipate those needs. So, 
along those lines, you guys have been building new products to try to focus on this concept of authenticity. You know, kids are growing up these days quantifying their self-worth through likes, and I, I think Instagram might emblemize that more than any product with its little heart, which really you know, gives you that sense of, uh, of self-assurance and feedback, that little dopamine hit. But why quantify likes in the first place publicly? Like, I understand why you show them to me, but why show them to everybody else? Well, I think what's important to know is that Instagram in the last two years has fundamentally evolved. And I think the feed was one, the only product that when I started the company was being used at scale. And I think our job has been to create new different ways that you can share that allow for the type of expression and sharing of, your, of all of your moments um, that, you, that you can publish and not have to be concerned about something like the like count. So for me, something like launching stories, uh, relaunching direct, which is a private messenger for your closest friends, they create different ways you can share based on what your needs are. And so for feed, it's actually a benefit that everyone sees certain types of things. Like when there's a special moments that happen to you, you want everyone to see them and you want people to be able to comment and like them and it makes you feel really great and connected to those people. And so we're trying to focus feed around those types of moments where, where those kind of parts of the system are really valuable. And things like stories where it's just about discussion. You want to post your life. You don't necessarily want people to like it or not. You're just like, hey, this is a thing that I'm doing, thinking or feeling. And it may just generate some discussion in direct because it's just about connecting with people. Have you ever considered just not showing how many likes my photo has to other people? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that we've thought through. And I think it's something we can continue to think through. But I think overall, having different ways you can share your life is the solution. Because usually the things that kind of have taken off and been successful, have been successful for a reason. They're adding value to people in some way. And so for us, the balance of feed plus stories plus direct and live, which is really in the moment even experience that then just goes away, gives you the full Instagram experience. So you guys have actually built something pretty cool to, to help focus on this and give people new ways to share outside of that like-driven ecosystem. Uh, do you want to share, share with us what you got? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So today I am very, very excited and proud to announce a new feature we've been working on for quite a while in testing. Um, and it's been built off of Stories, which has grown in the last um, couple of years to be a product that you know, most Instagram users use every day now and 400 million per day um, have access to. So can, uh, can we get that presentation up on the screen? So we're going to show you a quick, uh, quick presentation that talks about a product called Close Friends, which helps you share with an inner circle in your stories. And so why don't you just, oh, here we go. Cool, so it's a way that you can add people to a small list of friends and just share your story with just them. Yes. So tell me about the idea of how this offsets this kind of social pressure we have over time to just add anyone who sends us a friend request. Yeah, so I mean, ultimately, because stories grew to be uh, quite large, it's great that now you can share with lots of people and keep in touch with them, but also means that it's harder to go deeper and share the more personal moments with your inner circle. And so Close Friends allows you to create a list of people. It's one simple list and add as many people as you'd like. And usually from what we've seen in testing, it's people who really, quant they would kind of describe them as these are my real friends and people that I see and talk to pretty regularly. But if you add them or remove them, we don't notify them. It's a completely um, private list to the creator. And what happens is when you share your close friend's story, people just see a little bit more from you. And it allows you to share more deeply with a set of people that you're um, closer to on Instagram. And so we think that's going to help balance um, the things that may be for everyone with the things that may just be for a small inner circle. So there is one concern that I have with things like this, which is that you can create this sort of little safe haven echo chamber where people can share offensive content, the kind of things they would be afraid of sharing publicly because they might get in trouble. You know, is, is that a concern for you guys? And, how, and you, like you said, how do you, build, how do you predict and build to prevent that? Yeah, I mean, I think what's important about close friends is it's, it's connected 
content. So it's people that you are following, they are people that you're friends with, and they're people that you've added or they've added as saying, wow, this is someone that's a close friend of mine. The other piece of it is that it's just shared to, let's say, a couple dozen people that you might want to add to, and it's just added to your story. So it's not something where it's going to generate a bunch of like, group discussion, and you're just sharing more of your life, and then people may reply to you on direct from a one-on-one -on -one basis. So in usage and in testing, we haven't seen that use case as used, but something we definitely want to look out for and be careful of and make sure that people are having a good experience with the product. So is this your nail in Snapchat's coffin? I mean, this is honestly solving a product problem for us and Instagram, which is how to go deeper with the people that you care more about, and that's why we built this. And I think if you look at the arc of what we've tried to do, I'd say the first year at the company was around building new ways to share to help round out things like feed. So that was stories, a new direct around visual was live, making feed a place you could post multiple posts so that you could really live for your highlights. I think the last year has been much more about deepening your relationships with friends. And so if you look at things we built in stories around interactive creative tools like questions um, or polls, which typically get replies from friends and create direct threads with actual friends, all the way to um, live hangouts and direct, I think this is an extension of that. So you can have this deeper connection to the people that you care most about. I mean, from Facebook friend lists to Snapchat groups to Google Plus circles, if you guys remember those, this is a pretty much a cemetery of features. But I think you guys have actually really finally built this right. And so it's incredible to see someone whose you know, ancestors made a print magazine <laughs> about graphics who you know, just wanted to build things for other people and went from Yahoo, which I don't think most people think is a big product leader, to Instagram, which is just carrying this on. And even though your guys' founders have left, you're carrying on those values of craft and simplicity and putting people first and you're doing the deep research before you launch so you don't have to worry about these flops that some other companies end up doing when they try to push new products. Uh, and I've seen that you guys become more proactive about fighting the problems and there's always more work to do and I hope you guys keep up on it and say you know, the, the, the societal impact is more important than the profit. But you know, there, there really seems that, that the scandals are motivating you guys to work harder on these things. And I hope you really do develop this culture of force site where we can trust that Instagram is going to do what it was always really meant to do, which is give us a window into the lives of the people we love most. So thank you very much for talking with us, and thank you everyone for watching. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.